So you got your Phytech EFI system installed. You've run through the setup. You got it all up and running. It's time to get the engine up to temperature and we're gonna go through a throttle adjustment. All right, so we got our engine up to temperature now. I'm gonna key on. We got our handheld menu. I wanna to go to our initial setup. I'm gonna to go to idle setup, option three. We're gonna scroll down to idle screw set TPS. I'm gonna to go to all zero and send it to the ECU. What this is doing is it's locking the throttle position sensor at 0%. So as I'm using the throttle adjustment screw, I can go ahead and turn the screw as much as I need and it's not gonna register anything on the TPS. I've now jumped over to our large gauge section. I'm gonna open a couple of menus just so it's easier to see. The big ones here is the TPS, our target RPM, and the actual IAC position. So the IAC position, what we're going for is somewhere between three and 10. We're gonna fire it up. We're gonna use the throttle adjustment screw on the throttle body, and we're gonna get that number down under 10. So now that we've gone through the throttle adjustment with the system, I want to go over everything that we did and certain tips and tricks you can do with engine setups like we have here with a much larger cam. We ran the system, adjusted our throttle adjustment down until the IAC steps got to zero. At that point, I backed the screw out ever so slightly to watch the idle air steps come back up. At that point, we came up a little bit up to 10, 15. So I ran that screw back down and the idle was kind of unstable. So I turned the screw just to the point that the IAC step sat at zero and would every once in a while come up to three to five and then back to zero. Now at that point, with a mild cam, a lot of applications, you'd be able to nail somewhere between the three to 10 and you're good to go. With the big cam stuff, there's a couple things that you may wanna try to get the engine to idle more consistently. Uh, one of them being the idle air fuel ratio. So in the system, you can change the air fuel ratio that you're targeting. We default that at 13.6, which is good for most applications. With a big cam, sometimes you wanna go up to a higher air fuel ratio. The reason for that is, is the engine is not as efficient. And with the big cams, you got a lot of valve overlap where the intake and the exhaust valve are open at the same time. This puts a little bit of oxygen in the exhaust and can skew the system a little bit sometimes. So the advantage with changing the air fuel ratio is we'll go up to like 14 and a half, maybe in some applications, even 15 to one air fuel ratio and we're just listening to the motor. It's not a matter of what you're putting the number at at this point in time. We just wanna to listen to the engine. Does it start to idle a little more consistently? It's not bouncing around. With something like that, you're just listening. With this application, we stuck with the original number. The engine was happy at idling at 13.6 and wasn't floating around too much. But anytime you add a load onto the motor, whether that's the electric fans turning on, uh, the alternator being dragged because you're turning on accessories like headlights, um, stereo stuff, all of that will put more drag on the motor and the idle air motor needs to have the max ability to give more air. And being with a big cammed motor, we wanna maximize that. So that's where, why we would, would go down to like a zero on the IAC steps. With something that's like a stock engine, they're really basically happy down at a low RPM range, so that three to 10 is perfectly fine. So that's kind of some of the scenarios that go into doing the IAC steps on a big cammed motor. I hope that answers any kind of questions that you have and some of the variables that come with more radical setups. 
If you're interested in more tech videos and you want us to cover something specific to your application, please comment them down below and tune in next week. <laughs>